Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me back here in, do you know, the last days of Europe, in which we are looking at 51% party or conservative democracy support, of course led by Mr. Barry Goldwater, but the floor of the New York Stock Exchange at 4pm. The final bell rang at the New York Stock Exchange. The floor, busy as ever, was stopped in dead silence while there was ticker tape everywhere and every investor was itching to get home. The reality of what had just happened finally hit everybody. The highest single-day Dow Jones rise in history. Gentlemen, everyone here today just made history. The room exploded into applause. A bottle of champagne popped on the trading floor. Stocks traders from opposite sides of the room are dancing together. Tonight your families will eat well. Little Susie will get all the toys she wants for Christmas. You can finally buy that new car you've been eyeing for ages. Tonight, you will reap the rewards of the best economy in the history of the world. The sound is deafening, so much so that spectators outside pause in the street at all. Although the people on the floor were simple stock traders. All were from different walks of life. One thing was very clear. They would be rich, or they were rich, and they loved America. And perhaps one day everyone would be able to flourish from the economy that they helped create. Public confidence has been restored, and a system that works for everyone with equal opportunity for success. No more will John Doe be scared of investment, scared of starting a business, or making money. The American dream seems alive again, and in their cheers, a dream was born for everyone as we are beginning our descent, or really our excursion into the American nature. So, uh, ooh, it was political power, that kind of sucks, but that's alright, you know. Sometimes you gotta spend a little bit of money here and there. I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should go with Rumsfeld or McNamara. We'll get there eventually. Ooh, do we want that one? Austerity and finance. We lose political power, man. Ah, I think we'll go with the Yellowstone speech. What first comes to mind when President Goldwater thinks of America's natural beauty is the mighty, watery bellows of Yellowstone National Park's old faithful. The ancient caldera's most famous geyser forcefully ejects... Uh, jets of superheated water from earth to heaven, seeming to all and sundry like a wrathful pillar from the Old Testament. Yet for all its all inspiring power, Old Faithful and its adjunct supervolcano is helpless against the clouds of industrial smoke that clog its airs, or help the, against the heaps of scrap metal that defile its lands and waters. The President feels it is only fitting to announce his next great effort before such a strong yet helpless creation, for is that not what now best describes American nature? Cool. And expand the national parks. We lose political power, a little more debt, a little more expenses, but that's okay. Cleaning up the mess, repercussions. Um, let's do this. So expand the national parks. President Grant had made the presidential decision, or prescience decision, to set aside a parcel of America's thousands of square miles from civilization in 1872. Since then, the registry of the now named national parks have been updated 31 more times. These vast natural reserves are the jewels of the country's natural beauty, filled with flora and fauna only their ecosystems can support. But as it is the law, it recognizes only 32. We have much more than that, though. Let the darn fool Republicans and national progressives call him a tree hugging hippie as much as they like, but. President Goldwater will gladly draw money from the budget to protect more square miles and roll more of America's natural wonders into the registry of national parks because they could be a source of income, which is good. <coughs> oh, my apologies. And that's not bad. Just keep investing in the GDP, my friends. National park expenditures. The mountains are calling, my friends. As he waited for the new cameraman to set up, President Goldwater took a deep breath of Yellowstone's cool, clean mountain air. It was such a pleasure to get out of the endless hurly-burly of Washington, with its filth and smoke and smiling monsters waiting to sink a knife in him as soon as his back was turned. Yellowstone's quiet beauty brought him back to the simpler, happier days of his boyhood, running across Arizona's scorching scrublands with his brother and his sisters. Every American deserved to grow up like that, raised in nature's loving embrace. The director let the president know that they were ready. Goldwater took his place beyond the podium, his back to the expanse of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. The president had been long committed to the cause of, of environmentalism and the preservation of America's natural beauty, and he intended this to be a seminal speech to introduce the public to his love for America's national parks, and to hopefully sway them to support his program for greater environmental protections and regulations. Goldwater often found it difficult to believe that so many Americans were willing to sacrifice nature's bounty in exchange for the pollution of industry and the soullessness of the urban sprawl. Taking a deep breath of city's thoughts, he began. My fellow Americans, today I speak to you from Yellowstone National Park, greatest among America's natural monuments. Fifty years ago, this great nation made the commitment to protect and preserve our natural heritage, for these parks belong not to any man, but to us all. I would carry on this proud tradition and revitalize our national parks so that they may be enjoyed by our children, and our grandchildren, and all who come after. And so he continued extolling the virtues of the national parks and laying out his plan to enact a series of the programs to preserve the environment and to help the national parks grow and prosper, accompanied by his distant crash of the lower falls. The president ended his speech with a quote by the naturalist, John Muir. Climb the mountains and get their good tidings. Nice. Uh, do we have anything else here? Um, no, not too much. We're America's pretty united for now, and we can't do anything here, so. And that's okay. Expand the National Parks wallet with increased National Park funding. We may pass, however, many environmental acts we wish, but the trees and fish won't care any less for the borders we set. 
over the, for the penalties we have forced. Governments, hence, will always have a need for people to uphold its ordinances involving its voiceless, unheeding domains. The good men and women of the National Park Service are assigned this important task for all laws related to its special preserves. Like all federal agencies, the NS NPS needs money from the Congress to do its job well. The White House feels they need the cash injection more than, mo more than most, and has drafted this year's uh, budget with the National Park's pro pro proper protection and management well in mind. And let's go ahead and cut that down. Oh, we actually have some debt. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that is not good. Uh, are we building any civvies? Because if not, like... We're not spending much anyways, but like, still. The Environmental Protection Agency. <coughs> Despite its support for the state's constitutional rights, the President Goldwaters acknowledges that some responsibilities are too extensive for any one state to handle themselves. Aside from interstate commerce and foreign policy, he also believes environmental protection is a burden only the federal government can guaranteeably shoulder. Thus, a hypothetical Environmental Protection Agency will better uh, harness the country's will towards the stewardship of its natural bounty than the quilt work, often underfunded programs of its individual states. The President has directed his staff to draft plans for such an agency, keeping in mind the likelihood that Congress and its lobbyists will approve of it. If they won't then, well, the White House will cross that bridge in good time. Nice. It's always good to be responsible for nature. You only have one nature, you might as well take care of it, right? Now we have some comments to go through as well. Uh, uh, let's see. <coughs> Someone said that Gus Hall is a good man. Well, he can be. I don't know much about him in our timeline though. And and someone wanted me to go against all go against all corruption. All union corruption in that path on the right side, but America's greatest idea. The red live sign flicked off, and President Goldwater took off his headphones, addressing the nation and giving him a bit of a thirst, and he resolved to get one of the girls in the tapping pool to brew him up scorchingly hot coffee once he got back to the White House. He hoped the one with a blonde beehive hairdo would be there today. She knew how he liked it. Already, the president was pondering what the public would make of his new bundle of policies aimed at increasing the prosperity of the National Parks program by expanding the size of many parks and drastically increasing the, their federal funding. He knew plenty of the Republicans and the progressives in the NPP would rail against what they saw as him taking money out of the hands of the poor and giving it to a gang of tree huggers and mountain climbers, but he knew, he knew, with the slightest smile, that it wasn't too likely that they'd be able to sway the public to their side. The fact was that most Americans would be glad, or at least, very least, ambivalent. Towards the good news that the national parks would continue to be a major pillar in the preservation of America's environment, of course. He needed to find a way to actually, you know, pay for it, but that was something he could deal with later. For now, filled with lightness of being that comes with accompl accomplishing a long-held goal, Goldwater Rose made a mental note to have every available newspaper praising his speech, delivered to him as he made his way to, with his entourage back to Cadillac One. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. Nice, get some more political power. Investigate local repercussions. Anti-corruption measures. We have to go this way. It is said that congressmen convene in Capitol Hill to vote bills into law, but convene on the back rooms of K Street to draft and plan them. Meanwhile, the big names of the donor circles would hover by senators' and representatives' shoulders to ensure that these bills satisfy or at least do not affect overmuch their paymasters' bottom lines, and under undemocratic travesty it may be, but such is as part of life in the Beltway as sunshine and traffic jams. Presidents who fail to take the lobbyist grip into account become lame ducks after the first hundred days. President Goldwater thinks likewise, but not to appease them. He seeks ways to instead sideline them with corruption charges long before they inevitably become obstacles standing between the EPA bill and the resolute desk. <coughs> Excuse me, oh my goodness. And uh, anti air. Where is it? Oh, there are. Thank you, thank you. Oh, we cut all the debt. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Minus 20. Billing is not bad. Time to clean up the mess. Curtains drawn. The Oval Office was black as midnight even at noon. Pro President Goldwater was steepled his fingers as he looked down blearily at what he had been working on for the past six hours, trying to devise an ideal blueprint for his Environmental Protection Agency. He'd spoken to his advisors the previous day. Rockefeller strongly supported it. Reagan disapproved, insisting it would be a waste of government funds, and McNamara and Curtis were relatively blasé and disinterested. Nonetheless, they'd thrown around a lot of ideas, some of which, to the President's surprise, were even half-decent. After waking up, he had immediately started working on a plan of what the EPA should look like. And gosh darn it all. He was nowhere closer to figuring out than he had been yesterday. Though exhausted, through exhausted eyes, Goldwater once again looked over his work so far, trying to make it all come together in his mind. The EPA couldn't be too radical, but it couldn't be too limp wristed either. Or it might just, well, might as well just not even create it. It needed teeth, but it shouldn't be so powerful as to completely alienate the world of business and their friends at Congress. And of course, there was the smaller matter of how exactly the EPA would be funded, meaning which program would have its budget drained to bankroll it. 
The president rested his chin on his hand. So many problems, all requiring decisions. He couldn't let himself forget that what he was doing here was important, and that would have changed the lives of Americans for decades to come. Picking up the phone, Goldwater de decided to arrange for a press conference. To announce the Environmental Protection Agency was more than just a dream, that he was serious about preserving America's natural beauty for their descendants. Surely nobody could begrudge him if he left the details under until later. He was, after all, the president. America, America, man sheds his waste on thee. Investigate legal protect or re legal repercussions. Good lawmakers know that what provisions their bills can cover without running afoul of already established precedents. To the dismay of American environmentalists, we've never really had two centuries of precedent in allowing our captains of industry to dismantle the country's forests and pollute its waters for the sake of progress. This trend has suffered somewhat in President Roosevelt's heyday, but not to point out, but not to point where environmental legislation can pass through Congress without heavy opposition. Nevertheless, President Goldwater has begun consulting his most trusted advisors regarding the EPA's bill shape at this time. Secretary Reagan and Vice President Rockefeller hold conflicting opinions over how much power the new agency should have to fill its mandates. Oh boy. Of course we're going to vote R&D. Anyone who about that, please go ahead. It's a long way to November. And I hope we don't screw this up. So, what are we looking like? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, New England. East Coast. Deep South. New England, East Coast, Deep South. Let's start off with the top one. New England, because we can. Hope we keep our same number of senators. At least keeping 50 would be decent, so... Yeah, we'll see. We're at fi we're 52%, man. How do we get up to 52%? That doesn't make any sense to me, man. Hey, more political power that we don't really need. Okay, that's not bad. Anything else? I can't suppress political opponents. What's wrong with this? Why? We could cut that, but... Eh, we'll see. Yeah, that's just so many Democrats. Insane amount. But the legal repercussions. And we'll do, we will talk about this by the end of this episode, too. So. <coughs> I just want to get through the EPA stuff first. A thousand greasy palms. The list made Goldwater want to vomit. It physically sickened him to read it. A nausea that soon settled and turned into a hard ball of cold fury he held in his stomach, burning away at him, tensing his every muscle. Rockefeller sat opposite, his face growing more concerned by the second. Goldwater saw his vice president subconsciously draw back as he flicked his incandescently icy gaze on him. The air seemed to have sucked from the room, the weight of what Goldwater just read settling on him like an avalanche. Finally, bringing himself under control, even as he felt that inflamed, boiling little ball in his stomach, growing by the second, the president broke this tension. So this is all of them, said the president. A statement, not a question. Rockefeller deflated with instant relief like a punctured balloon. Yes, Mr. President, my aides and I have been working on this for some time now. This is every individual, business, and governmental organization we've identified as being potential cohorts in a plan to subvert your environmental policies. As you can see, it contains members of Congress, local governments, and members of the Fortune 500, including many individuals we have previously tagged as potentially engaging in corrupt Activity. The president just sat there, saying nothing, staring into the middle distance. Rockefeller gulped and finding his courage sallied forth, Mr. President. Uh, Goldwater's eye snapped onto him. Will Nelson said to the president, I'd say we got some work to do. Time to drain the swamp. Clean Water Act? Senate through Congress. Nice. Ah, we gotta get rid of the, the corruption here first, so the Clean Water Act. Clean water is more than just water to safely drink. Clean water is water free of metals and plastics. And for our water to for to water our farms and let Breathe our fishes. Clean water is water free from taint, giving whatever landscape a course is a beautiful trail of shimmering blue. Clean water is water unblemished by the hands of men, uh, made closer to providence for its existence alone. It is through laws and decrees that such hands are kept away from such a precious resource. For as recent memory unfortunately shows, men are happy to corrupt clean water into impure water without the visible hand of government to chastise a tomfoolery. Now more than ever, President Goldwater believes the federal government needs such laws before America's fresh waters are polluted fully. He will not find many allies in Congress for this purpose. The left prefer that our handouts uncompromised by nature's laments, whereas the right bleed out about yet another of a million supposed federal overreaches, but the president himself remains undeterred over his commitment to walking life's narrow gate. <coughs> nice. Man, I just want to suppress political opponents. Is that too much to ask for? How low can we go? Dr curtains drawn. The Oval Office was as black as midnight, even at noon. Um, uh, Goldwater steepled his fingers and looked down bitterly at what he'd been working on for the past six hours. Um, I think I've read, read this one, right? So many problems, so many decisions. Surely no one could begrudge him if he left the details until later. He was, after all, the president. Better, better to bend a little than to break. An investigation will take place seeing the limits of our legislation. Alright, well, we'll see. That's going to kill us in the Senate elections, isn't it? Oh, look at this. So we have 14 out of these guys. 41 out of 58 Senate, uh, Democrat senators. Three and the one far right. So, um, that's four. 45, 45. We should be able to pass it, right? Some for support from the far right, but we're already done with them. Wait.
Wait, what? It's not progressing. It's not because of the unfulfilled conditions. What do you mean? No major bills being debated in Congress. Uh, what? What? Hold on. What? Hold the phone. Um. What? This literally makes no sense. You can't cancel it manually. Uh, <coughs> I guess we encounter our first bug here or something. Um, you can see, you literally see the days going by. Uh, well, that's not good. Uh, that's a huge bug then. Can we use console commands for this? What if we did focus dot no checks? Can we do another one instead? We can't. I don't want to do that one yet. Let's do that one like El Duchi's disaster or something. Just because it is what it is. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. Can we? Oh boy. Oh boy. We can't even use. Oh, this is this is a big bug. That is not good. Um. Let me go ahead and see if I can do anything different. I might have to use console commands just to bypass some of this, but we'll see what happens. Devil on one shoulder, angel on the other. President Goldwater frowned as he sipped his coffee hotter than the surface of Venus, just the way he liked it, though it was doing little for his mood. McNamara's proposal of what compromises and amendments to make to his initial plan for Environmental Protection Agency lay on the desk, the object of his ire. Much to his irritation, the President was forced to admit that McNamara's ideas would certainly be effective as pushing the EPA through Congress and establishing it with minimal blowback. Unfortunately, there was a price, major concessions to the same polluting industries that the EPA was being established to regulate. It was, in effect, a blunting of the teeth, a domestication, intended to hobble the EPA and prevent it from tackling the big dog. Sure, it'd do some good, but the richest and thus most powerful offenders would get away virtually scot-free, with only a slap on the wrist for the future crimes against the environment they were sure to commit if McNamara's proposal shaped the EPA instead of his. Goldwater's pen hovered above the dotted line. If he signed, he'd be tarnishing one of his long-held dreams, giving the polluters carte blanche to continue raping the natural world in exchange for agreeing to follow a handful of token restrictions. When he touched the pen to paper, he felt the familiar fire indignation building in his chest. Would Michelangelo have knocked off David's head to just satisfy his critics? The president faltered, torn. It'd be easier to sign and endorse McNamara's proposal. Just a few strokes of the pen and be able to avoid the anger of his voter base, but... And the party conservatives in the business community, but... Said that other little voice in his head, this is what you've been fighting for. Don't let them take it from you. Don't let the dudes win. Given McNamara, this sounds awfully risky. We can push our legislation to its limits. Stand tall and let them take the best shot. We're going to go all the way with... Goldwater, yeah. Goldwater. So, I haven't finished this with someone yet, so we're going to do this one, and we'll just use cons commands for this if we can, so. A thousand greasy palms, of course. Time to drain the swamp, right? Awesome. So, I don't know why we got that event before we got this one, so. Um, just in case. Uh, can you actually just pass this? Yeah, it is. Cool. So, I don't want to use cons commands for this stuff, but we'll do it if we have to. So, the Clean Water Act approved by Congress. A step forward for the environment, the Clean Water Act, or CWA, an environmental bill spearheaded by President Barry Goldwater himself, has garnered the requisite amount of votes to be accepted as law. This lays the foundation of U.S. environmental policy. The Clean Water Act, as the name implies, would ensure America's water is protected from pollution. With this initiative, the U.S. will start the work of cleaning up the parks and rivers. Opposition came from both President's right and his left, but it seems he has succeeded at persuading Congress of the necessity of the Clean Water Act. While the President's environmental sensibilities are not widely held within Congress, or even his own administration, it to set him apart from other politicians as a principal man, with a love for nation. Extensive preparations had gone into the creation of the CWA. Certainly this act has won the president favor with America's youth, who seem to be more sympathetic to environmental causes than their parents. For now, America's water will be a little bit cleaner. Great news for Goldwater and the environment. Nice. Since we have to wait for that stuff anyways, let's come down here. Austerity in finance and abundance in defense. Ooh, this is not going to be good. War brings arduous necessities. Among these is lack acknowledging when to cut back other public expenses in order to serve the country's ability to wage the wars needed to protect it. <clears throat> The American war machine hasn't thoroughly greased its joints in what seemed like ages, and little eases friction in them quite like money for the war machines and a place to send them. Needless to say, this entails a comprehensive austerity to reserve the funds for purchasing equipment, armors, arms, and such. <clears throat> Not to mention, the scrap materials for manufacture them. Public allotments for social programs, subsidies, and commerce enforcements evaporate from their original applications and resurface back in the Defense Department's coffers via executive order and urgently phrase persuasive community keys to Congress. The skin is pulled tight to Uncle Sam's face and he's letting the excess come out in munitions and in engines to drive them to their scheduled destination. Now, uh, I asked you guys yesterday. Well, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, let's get that one. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what we research at this point. 
<clears throat> but I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do Rumsfeld plan or we should go with McNamara's plan. But overall, you guys recommended we do McNamara's vision. It just barely beat out at the time of this recording um, Rumsfeld plan. So, <clears throat> McNamara, congrats. In Washington, quite a few of the big wigs in Goldwater's military cabinet, chiefly Robert McNamara, have held a mana from heaven realization. More troops mean we can simply swarm the RK forces with raw numbers. The Nazis are already relying on strange slave labor conditions for their resources, even a good portion of the cons conscripts. If they can be exhausted thoroughly via good old-fashioned GI mass deployments and mass encirclements, they can be driven back through a resolve as well as their personal depleted and broken. No nation on earth save Japan could withstand the full-blooming mobilization of America's young men against it all at once. Those paltry few that could, that could would usually need weapons of mass destruction to definitively repel the pressurized application of so many well-coordinated invaders. Enough men will send the right packing, and, and of this, McNamara is positive. I feel, an, honestly, a little hesitant going with McNamara just because he's McNamara, Mr. Numbers, but... It is what it is. Limited conscription. Lessons from South Africa. <coughs> God, we get so much manpower. The more, the merrier. Well, there's even more political power. A mediocre campaign. What the heck? McNamara's vision. Followed up with... Uh, let's see. Limited conscription. More men, more munitions. Well, or, ooh, we get more supply consumption, which kind of sucks. I'll be honest. That kind of really sucks. Uh, if you want to do about that, please go ahead. Uh, which one do we do? Honestly, like, we're not gonna go to war, so... I don't... That weekly map is super nice. I don't want to lose any more political power. Ugh, weekly map so much. Weeding the garden. Nixon accomplished little during his brief and tumultuous presidency, but was not without its triumphs. One which was the Federal Election Campaign Act, in essence. The FECA regulates political funding and campaigning, and among other things. It instituted legal limits on how much could be contributed to a political campaign. Hailed as a major blow against electoral corruption, the FECA was intended to level the playing field and root fraud from the uh, election process. Nevertheless, there will always be people willing to skirt the law if they think they'll get what they want, or give them what they want. Money makes the world go round, after all, and the marble halls of government are packed with those willing to have a few greenbacks stuffed in the back pocket. President Goldwater has been furious to discover businesses were working with politicians to subvert his environmental legislation, but his anger was then a pale comparison to the Hadian rage that burst from him when he was informed that major businesses had made, a, made illegal donations to pro-business, anti-environment politicians in exchange for votes. Lobbying is one thing, and outright bribery is, you know, quite the other. Driven by that ball of cold fury that burned within him, Goldwater decided to push the big red button and call out the corruptors and the lackeys who were so willing to undermine America's democratic traditions to continue their unabated plunder of the environment. And so, the ever believer in the system, he took them to court. Let's see how smug they are when the judge reads out their misdeeds for the whole nation here. Bring the gavel down. <clears throat> nice. Go back to New England as well. Also, I completely forgot about Iran, but we still won. I completely forgot about these guys, I'll be honest. I completely forgot. It, but we still won, so. We still did great there. Oh, no, no, no. It's on edit mode. Oh, that's not good. Eh, yeah, whatever. We'll take a look at that a little later. Um, so, yeah, we'll do that. <clears throat> Senate through Congress. After weeks of compromising, appeasing, and negotiating, and strong arming, uh, the National Environmental P Policy Act of blank is finally ready to be voted upon both the houses of Congress. <clears throat> For a bill with just as much bipartisan opposition as bipartisan support, the passage of one of the President's Goldwater's major pieces of legislation is by no means certain according to observers and insider information. When asked about his outlook for a new law's fate, the President said that he will personally see to the enactment of a Greener America's Herald, no matter the cause. And also, just in case this happens again, we're just going to go save, because if we can't complete this focus, that's completely BS and bogus, so... Yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm glad I focus on the economy first, so... Please tell me we can do it. Please tell me we can do it. Please tell me we can get this done. Wait, you can force it through. If we were to have any trouble getting permission from the creation of the EPA through Congress, Goldwater uh, will be able to force the EPA into existence through executive order. This won't please the South, who might see this as government overreach. We'll not let some Southerners harm our environment. Oh boy. Well then. And it looks like this is also glitchy as well, which is... Why? Why? This makes no sense. So, we're going to have to force it through. Alright, so I've gone ahead and just used console commands again. I did FA. Just because... It's glitch, so. Congress approves the Environmental Protection Agency. 
Good news for President Goldwater. His attempts to get Congress to agree on the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency have paid off. The bill, a great step forward in environmental legislation, has been accepted by both the House and the Senate. Regardless of his firm belief in laissez-faire, President Barry Goldwater has always had a special appreciation for America's natural beauty, enough that it would be see it protected by the federal government. Peculi particularly, younger voters seem to agree with, it, with and appreciate the President's environmentalist tendencies, making it likely that he's to enjoy a small surge in support amongst the demographic. <clears throat> With this passing, the President's bills have created a new federal agency, the EPA, or Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA will be made responsible for ensuring that all of America's nature will be preserved and not just subjected to needless and excessive pollution though, through helping develop and enforce environmental regulation in cooperation with Congress. The President can rest a little easier knowing that America's beauty is preserved for the next generation. Good news for Goldwater and the environment. Democrats become more popular. Not bad. So, the green future. Our expenses rise a little. Ooh, this is not bad. Um, history is wont to let hagiographies of its greatest men one moment and hurl diatribes of their failings the next. One needs to no look no further than the esteemed line of presidents to see this phenomenon in question. According to literature, George Washington was both America's beloved pa pater patrie and a slave-owning tyrant. These very books, same books, led to Abraham Lincoln up as a paragon of American virtue, at the same time denouncing his heavy-handed suppression of American freedoms during the address of war. Decades from now, Barry Goldwater will meet their inevitable judgment like the presidents before him. What Goldwater will their narrative depict? He hoped it would be Goldwater the environmentalist. The ardent champion of the greatest among the American people's shared heritages. But it was equally likely that the gold water they paint will resemble a tree hugging dictator with more than a civilized man. Or more than a civilized man. With a swig, Barry emptied his mug before forcing his attention towards other presidential matters. He can move over his reputation after he gets out of office. For now, America has an infestation of extremists to exterminate. America is no place for radicals. Ooh. Interesting. Uh, you know what? I'll leave this up to you guys. Should we do limited conscription? And the more the merrier. Or should we do lessons from South Africa? And more men, more munitions, and, uh, not that one. Well trained men need good guns. Let me know in the comments below because we're going to conclude with dealing with unions or labor unions. President Goldwater's antipathy for the labor union is well known. In fact, it's part of his appeal for those who had voted him into office last November. Swayed by fiery, passionate rhetoric aimed at the corrupt bosses who sought to undermine a great democracy in the name of Marx and Lenin, strong arming, hard working Americans left with no other choice but to contribute to the glorified protection racket, the American people have been given him the mandate to excise this gray threat lurking in plain sight. Buoyed by their trust, the president has chosen to dedicate his energies in the coming days to make plans for the task which he has been entrusted. Above all else, the righteous fight before him shall not stumble before it even stepped one foot in for the march. Begin fighting the fight against the unions? Nice. If handled poorly, this might have disastrous consequences for our administration. As a good thing, we're going to try to do this thing last, so. Nice. And what does this one say? Fund the EPA? Uh, close out this one. Oh, yeah. Election stuff. No one cares right now. Uh, found the EPA. Yeah, why not? We'll see what happens. All right. We'll read that. We have 54%, which is pretty awesome. And poverty is getting quite a bit better. Nice. Cherish these natural wonders. After her secretary left, closing the door to the old office behind her with a muted click, President Goldwater exhaled heavily and leaned back in his chair. It creaked behind him as he gazed up at the immaculately white ceiling. Lethargically reaching forward, he picked up a small a cup of coffee she had left him and took a brief sip. Hot as a Yellowstone caldera. It was official as dream of a government dedicated to protecting America's natural places or places had come to pass. The creation of the Environmental Protection Agency would be made public the following morning in the press conference when he would once again face the flashing lights and dark eyes of the cameras he'd once come to know so well. Knocking back his coffee, Goldwater allowed a small smell to grow as his scorching liquid warmed the inside of his chest. He reflected on the obstacles he had skirted around or even smashed through to bring the EPA into being. The corrupt lobbyists he had to silence, the local governments who needed to be brought into line, with the difficulty of getting the details right with his advisors, and finally the bloody path he had carved through Congress just to get them to read the bill. It had been a battle well fought and a victory well earned after the endless bustle of the past few weeks. The president was finally able to enjoy the simple pleasures of a hot cup of coffee and a moment's peace, as well as the knowledge that he had forever ensured the preservation of America's natural heritage. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I do apologize for the shorter video, but at the time of recording, I'm running out of time. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be quite a bit longer. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.